but this is what the Giants have done with their backs. Wolford, Michigan. Bunch, Michigan. Wheatley, Michigan. I think the Giants have found a home for running backs, but it also brings up the question, what do you do with Rodney Hampton in the last year of his contract? Somebody else needs one? Don't be surprised if maybe there aren't some trades going on right now where, say, the Raiders or Chicago or somebody could fill a need with a deal for a Rodney Hampton to make room for Tyro Tyrone Wheatley to come in and play. It's the uh, sixth straight year that Michigan has had at least one player in the top round. This year, it's Tyrone Wheatley. And the Giant fans are ecstatic. Raiders on the clock next. The Raiders. The Volvo 850 Turbo Sports Wagon. It goes places no wagon has gone before. Listen, the stuff that we make is powerful. It makes you powerful. Stuff that we make is powerful. Take it. Listen. The Gather up your ideas. Run with them. It makes you powerful. Just do something amazing. We're in your corner. And we can't wait to see what you're going to do. The stuff that we make. Listen. 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 Historic title defense on HBO. It's gonna be a great fight. Oh, Foreman's got some punch. Hey, remember when he knocked up Frazier in 73? No. But did you see that shot that dropped Norton in 74? Never saw it. But remember what he did to Cooney back in 90? Uh, no. I don't remember. How could you guys not remember some of the biggest fights in boxing history? We were out. Foreman versus Schultz, live, coming soon, only on HBO. Didn't I knock you out, anyone? There's a place near you where the mountain climbers never touch the ground. Where the bodies are made of iron and the bikes of titanium alloy. It's Performance Bicycle Shop with over 6,000 square feet of high-tech cycling gear. But if you go, bring a stump jumping spirit and your visa card. Because at Performance, they take cycling to the extreme, but they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Yeah, it's a Volvo wagon. Oh, I've seen them all day. All day. We are uh, back at the draft headquarters at the Paramount Theater in New York. We've had 17 of the 32 picks in the first round, a little over the halfway mark. Let's uh, whip it around to our correspondents in the field to get their impressions on what's happened and what might. We'll uh, tee it off with a team that's made two intriguing picks. Uh, let's go to the Jets and Hank Goldberg. Hammer and Hank, what do you got? Well, Chris, keeping it within the division, let's take a look at what the Dolphins' needs are because they won this division last year. And I talked with Coach Shula yesterday, and he, I asked him, because a lot of people think they've helped themselves so much in the offseason they don't have drastic needs. But he said offensive line is a tremendous need because of Dellenbach going to New England, the uncertain st status of Burt Widener and Ron Heller's age. So he's got to be happy with all those offensive linemen sitting there. Let's go to Carolina. Chris, I'm Chris Mortensen with the Carolina Panthers. When the Panthers traded the number one pick to the Bengals. They picked up an extra pick at the top of the second round. Three picks in that area, and Dom Capers, the Carolina Panthers coach, says he expects to get three starters out of those picks. Now let's go to Philadelphia. I'm Mark Malone. The Steelers still picking at number 27, and uh, their phone has been ringing a little bit today with inquiries for running back Barry Foster, but nothing that interests them. They have a need to get some depth at offensive line, and who replaces tight end Eric Green? Well, Washington Mark Bruner is still on the board. Now let's send it to Jacksonville. I'm Andrea Kramer. The Chiefs have kept their eye on tackles Blake Brockermeyer and Reuben Brown and linebacker Lorenzo Stiles. Brown is already gone. If the other two aren't there when they pick 19, it could be the first time under Marty Schottenheimer they trade down. Let's head to Dallas. I'm Chris Myers. Cowboy reaction to the 49ers trading up for Stokes. Jerry Jones said, hey, they put their money in their passing game. We put it in our running game with Emmett Smith. They were not surprised. As for the Dallas draft, they're 28th, and things are slow. Jerry, Larry, and Barry speak here. See, they're waiting. They'll probably trade down. They're talking running back or offensive lineman in Dallas. They hope to see the right pick. Let's go on to Tampa. I'm Gary Danielson here in Tampa. Tampa's not done on defense. They got Warren Sapp, but in the second round, 
This is a team that's probably going to look for a linebacker. They ran a 4-2-5 nickel situation last year. New defensive coordinator Rusty Tillman says we've got to get some linebackers on this football team. Let's go to Minnesota. All right, Gary, I'm Brad Nessler the Vikings headquarters. They could use a quarterback of the future. Warren Moon's as old as I am. Chad May's been one of the guys they've had come in here to work out. I think it's a stretch, though, to take him number 24. If Corey Stringer falls down, look for the Ohio State tackle to come to Minnesota. Let's go to Buffalo. I'm Chris Fowler. Interesting to watch the underclassmen. Kevin Carter wanted to come out last year, got a bad rap, he felt, decided to stay in. It paid off. J.J. Soaks comes back for his senior year. It pays off. Mike Mamula, against the advice of some, comes out early, it pays off. Derek Alexander comes out after his junior year, it pays off. As for Tyra Wheatley, we will never know. Many feel it's a misconception. He would have gone top five as it is, pays off because he gets his college degree. Let's go to San Francisco. I'm Leslie Visser. The 49ers didn't get to be world champions by sitting still, and they're not done yet. They're working right now to package their remaining picks with a player to move up to the third or even the second round. You might remember last year, Bill Romanowski was traded on draft day to Philadelphia. And apparently no one is untouchable. The names floating around here are Tim McDonald and John Taylor. Back to New York. All right, Leslie, and, and thanks to everybody. There's our, our whip around the league on what is coming up. Uh, Tyron Wheatley is coming to New York, running back of the Giants. He's with our Craig James right now. Pony? Yeah, he's coming to New York. He's on the phone now, I think, with Coach Dan Reeves. And one thing about it is, well, yes, he did earn the degree, as Chris Fowler said. He could have come out last year and been a top-five pick. And I, I guess we have to kind of obey the rules here. With Coach Reeves on the phone, you can understand that. But, Tyrone, one thing about him is that what he did do is admirable coming back allowed him to do things he wanted to do personally and what this is it he says this is it they're doing a deal hey boomer we'll go back to you and uh whenever you guys have time we'll come back here well he's uh it, it's his it's his dime right as they say on the phone the raid is our next picking five and a half minutes to go for the silver and black we'll be back i have three and a half hours in the 60th uh NFL draft again a long time ago there are 249 picks in this one this is the 18th pick in the first round it's the Raiders and the card is at the podium do they go Salam do they go speed with the 18th uh, selection in the first round, the Los Angeles Raiders select the running back from the University of Washington, Napoleon Kaufman. Oh. Like we said, do they go speed? Kansas City Chiefs are next on the clock. This is an interesting pick. High if you rate it on the board, but a unique player. Is he not Napoleon Kaufman? Productivity for a man his size and the heart. Very interesting pick for the Raiders. I'll tell you, yeah, you say he's small, but he's really not. I think you just look at his size, people write him off, but he's a, a strong Very kid, pound for pound, one of the stronger players on the club, great character kid, loves to play the game. He'll probably be a scout or a personnel director 15 years from now, Chris. The kid really analyzes everything, loves the personnel evaluation of football players. You can see him here, the ability to change direction, reverse his field, do anything he has to to pick up yardage. Very resourceful runner. And uh, you know, return man, which he gives you that bonus. We talked about how important that is. And you see even as a return man, the ability to seek out open spaces and create his own opportunities. What he's got to work on in the National Football League is going to be catching the football, becoming more of a natural and a fluid receiver who can make the tough catch, not just the easy ones on the swing pass, Joe. Well, Mel, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily think that has to be the case. And the reason why I don't think it has to be the case is because you take a look at the football team that he's going through are going to the Raiders have just a ton of speed and they like to put the ball outside to their people sure Jim Fossil would like to incorporate the back a little bit but he's got a young guy with tremendous speed that's the thing when you think of the Raiders you think of big linemen and you think of people who can just flat run they still have tremendous speed outside they've got tight ends who can catch the football now they've got a little back who's fast who gives that offense just a little bit more versatility to take a little bit more of the pressure off of Jeff Hosteller I think it's a good pick you could almost throw a blanket over most of the backs after uh, Kajana Carter. So it works out fine. Almost 1,400 yards last year at Washington. Almost about 1,300 the year before. Over 1,000 the year before that. Always averaging five and a half, six and a half yards a carry. And the second running back named Napoleon that we'll see in Raider uniform. Uh, Napoleon McCallum. 
And now Napoleon Kaufman. Let's go up to Mike Gottfried. And uh, it, uh, there's no question that this Napoleon, as was the other one, but this Napoleon is a football player in capital letters. Well, Chris, he adds a lot to this Raider ball club. Special teams, first of all. He's a great special teams player, has been so far in the, back, in the Pac-10 for Washington. But the thing I like best about him is what people knock a little bit about him is I think he can catch the ball in the backfield, and I think he'll be a Dave Meggett type of guy in that offense for him. So I really like this pick. Uh, let's go to Chris Fowler in Buffalo. Well, I agree with you, Mike. I really felt in the weeks before this draft, Napoleon Coffin was a forgotten guy, underrated by many people, see him as a very good pro. However, I was on the phone with Rashawn Salam at his home in San Diego when the Raiders made the pick, and he was very disappointed and a collective groan from those in the room. As I said before, the Raiders were the number one choice of Salam. Now he has to sit and wait. Green Bay is another team that's shown a lot of interest, and there are some picks coming up in the next five. A lot of teams needing running backs. Boomer? Oh, Tim Brown, the Rocket, many others with the speed up there. First Raider running back taken in the first round since 1982. That was Marcus Allen. That certainly worked. Let's go to Craig James, who's with Ty Wheatley, but also you had a chance to see Kaufman play uh, over his college career. Big heart. He's a great running back. The speed, the speed that killed a lot of teams in the Pac-10. One thing about him, he can run. He is extremely strong. I agree with Coach Gottfried about his hands. I think he can catch the ball. They just never really pushed him into that. Napoleon Coffin, I mean, you, you've got your thoughts on him, too. Oh, yeah, Napoleon's a good runner. I've seen him run, you know, in two of the Rose Bowls that we played in. And uh, a lot of people say, if he, is he big enough to take the beating? I think Napoleon's a good enough back to where he can make you miss. When he won't take the beating, and uh, if needs be, he'll dish out a beat. You had a great prediction. You said they were going to take him before the announcement. What all was going on back there? Well, I mean, uh, I kind of felt that, you know, I was going to uh, L.A., but I felt, as you know, uh, if they didn't pick me, they were going to pick him. Um, you know, no disrespect to Rashawn, but I just thought that they would take Napoleon because I feel as though that they're, he's the type of guy that fit their program. How about you in New York? You got a lot better reception here by the fans in New York than Kyle Brady did from Jets fans. Well, I mean, uh, the reception was just one of, uh, I think, the Jets wanted something else, and I guess they didn't get it, but uh, I, I, lo I love the reception. How about Rodney Hampton? Where's the room back there? I don't know. Uh, you know, you got three, you know, two big backs already, and then I'm coming in, so, uh, you know, we'll just have to worry about that later, but if you're looking for a teacher, I, I got two of the best, so. You talk about that ring. You said you may get it for all these other guys. Well, I mean, I mean you know, uh, New York has definitely been a team in the top rankings, you know, and uh, they never drafted this high, I'm thinking, you know, a couple of years. But I feel as though I get a ring a lot earlier than a lot of these guys will. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm counting on, bringing right. it home. Congratulations. You got your degree and you're a first-round pick. And, hey, these running back deals here, there are a lot of good ones, as Joe said, that you could throw the blanket over. But there's some good ones out there still available. Well, certainly, Craig, uh, one of them uh, is the Heisman Trophy winner, Rashad Salam. He had the 2,000 yards last year. Napoleon Kaufman, though. You ask around the league, you get the same answer. Big time ball player. When you go by the University of Washington, there's Napoleon in the offices, always looking at tape. I mean, he's here. Uh, I've gotten to know him, and he's a football junkie. I mean, he loves studying tapes. He wants to be good. He's, uh, uh, he's not the size of these other guys, but he's tremendously strong for for his size, well-muscled, he's explosive, he's a breakaway. I think he's got a, a great future in the league. Napoleon is exactly the kind of player that, that that's more suited to the style of pro football we play today. He's got great speed. He was a 60-meter champion in high school. He's, a, you know, he's got a lot of ability to run fast. Uh, he can catch the ball well enough, and he can, make, he can run inside. He's a multiple player that can play on three downs, and, and any team that can use him in certain situations, like as a nickel back or as a running back, as a change of pace player, I think he's very valuable. And in this style of game, in this style of football today, there's clearly a spot for him. Hey, Mom, I just got here. No draft here in New York. The Kansas City Chiefs are on the clock followed by the Norris Division, Detroit, Chicago, and Green Bay. Let's quickly go down to uh, Panthers headquarters in, in South Carolina and join Chris Mortensen. Uh, word on the Chiefs? 